In this video here, we're going to take a look at iteration. Now, iteration is a numerical method that allows us to find a value of x such that f of x is equal to zero. And you probably came across iteration for the first time back in GCSE Maths, so the questions and the concepts featured in this video here hopefully shouldn't be too unfamiliar. Now, questions that use an iterative process will often ask you to show how the iterative formula has been derived. And to do this then, what we do here is we rearrange f of x equals zero into this form here then, so x is equal to g of x. And what we now do is we use the iterative formula of x of n plus one is equal to g of xn. And just note as well then that some iterations will converge to a root. And this can happen in one of two ways. So let's just have a look then at these two situations in more detail. So let's just get started with the first method here then, which uses something called staircase diagrams. So the first way is when successive iterations get closer and closer to the root from the same direction. And this creates what is known as a staircase diagram. Now, the graph on the left below here demonstrates a staircase diagram for y equals x, that's this straight line here, and y equals g of x, which we can see here again on our diagram. And what we're also given here then for questions such as this one is x0. And we take x0 here as a starting value. So now by using iteration and x0 as our starting value, we obtain x1, x2, x3, so on and so on. And as you can see here then, with each iteration, we're getting closer and closer to the root. So what we say here then is we're converging to the root. But just note then that not all starting values or iterations will lead to convergence. In fact, if the iteration moves away from a root, often increasingly quick, we say that it diverges. And the graph on the right below here demonstrates an example of iterations diverging from the root. Okay. So as you can see here, then we have x naught, right? This is our starting value. And now by using iteration, we obtain x1 and x2 here. But as you can see, right, we're getting further and further away from the root here. Okay. That would be this point here, the point of intersection. Okay. So with each iteration, we're actually getting further and further away from the root here, the thing that we want to converge to. Okay. So for this example here, this is an example of divergence. So that gives us everything that we need here then for staircase diagrams. So to finish with here, then we have the second method, which uses something called cobweb diagrams. So the second way is when successive iterations alternate below the root and above the root. And this creates what is known as a cobweb diagram. Now the graph below, as we can see here, demonstrates the concept of a cobweb diagram for y equals x and y equals g of x. And again, we can see that here on our diagram. So we have y equals x, we have y equals g of x, and we're also given x naught, our starting value. So by using iteration here, we obtain x1, x2, x3, so on and so on. And as you can see then, once we plot all of this here, this produces a cobweb diagram, okay? And we converge then to the root here. So if I do that in a different color, like so, as we can see here, we have our root. And this will just keep getting closer and closer to the root. In other words, it's just converging, right? So that gives us everything that we need here for an introduction to iteration. We don't really need much more than that. So to finish with here, let's just work through a couple of practice questions together. So let's just get started here then with question one on iteration. So for this question, we're given this function here, f of x, which is equal to x squared minus 6x plus 2. Now for the first part of this question then part A, we just want to show that the equation f of x equals 0 has a root in this given interval here. So for part A then, how do we show that there is a root in this interval here? Well, what we need to consider then is a change of sign in this interval. So to begin with then, Let's find f of 5 here. So f of 5. So to do that, all we need to do here is substitute 5 into this function. So we get 5 squared. We get 5 squared minus 6 lots of 5 plus 2 
like so. So what do we get here then? So we get 25 minus 30, so that's minus 5, plus 2, so that gives us minus 3, which is less than 0. Okay, so we now consider f of 6 here. So f of 6, so again, all we need to do here is just substitute this value into this function here. So we get 6 squared minus 6 lots of 6, so again, it's just minus 6 squared minus 6 lots of 6 plus 2 is equal to, so this is 36 minus 36, that's just 0, plus 2 there. We just obtain 2, but notice then that 2 is greater than 0. Okay. So what we obtain here then is a change of sign in this interval. So let's just make a note here. So therefore, there is a change of sign. There is a change of sign. in the interval so this is for x between 5 and 6 so x between 5 and 6 there and we also need to just say then that f is continuous so f here is continuous oh that's about that correctly so f is continuous, and therefore then there is a root. There is a root of f of x in this interval. Okay, like so there, and there we have it. So that gives the solution there to part a. So moving on to part B then, which wants us to use this given iterative formula here to find the values of x1, x2, x3, and x4. So three decimal places taken x0 to be equal to 5.4. So for part B then, there's two ways to really go about answering this part of the question. The first method is to just do all of this by hand, which is absolutely fine, but it is a little bit slow and tedious. And then the other method here is to just use a calculator, which is obviously much quicker. Okay. So let's just briefly discuss both methods here. So to begin with, we're taking x0 to be equal to 5.4 here. So x0 then is equal to 5.4. So to begin with, if we're doing this by hand then, well, we want x1 to begin with here. We've got x0, the next value then is x1. So to find x1, what we do here is we use this iterative formula. So x1 then is equal to the square root of 6 times x0 minus 2. So 6 times x0 minus 2. Okay. Put that into your calculator, and this gives us x1. And what we can now do is use this value here of x1 to find x2. Okay. So x2 in that case is equal to the square root of 6 times x1 minus 2. Again, just input this here into your calculator, and that would give you the value of x2. So you can see this process is pretty straightforward, mathematically nothing too challenging, but it is quite slow and tedious having to do each iteration here by hand. Okay. The other way is to just use a calculator. So let me just quickly grab my calculator here so we can run through this together. So I've got my calculator here, right? Now the first thing that I need to do then is input our starting value here, which in this case is 5.4. So I do 5.4 and I press enter or execute whatever the input function is on your calculator. Okay. And what that does here then is it stores this value, which in this case is 5.4, into the memory of our calculator. Okay. Now, if we want x1 here, what I need to do then is use this iterative formula here but basically replace xn with the answer button on our calculator or the answer function on our calculator. Okay. If I do the square root bracket, so do use a bracket here just so it doesn't take the square root of, for example, just 6xn here. So that's the square root of the bracket then of 6 times the answer. So I can just write this as 6 answer here, uh, but you can write that as multiplication as well. That's absolutely fine. So 6 times the answer minus 2. And don't forget to close the bracket here. And what this will do now 
is give us the value of x1 here. And the magic of this method here then is that, is that if I press enter again here, what that now gives me is x2. I press enter again, we obtain x3, press enter again, we get x4, so on and so on here. So if you did this correctly then, what you should have found here for x1 is we get 5.5136195.01. Obviously, we just need to give the answer here to three decimal places. So in that case then, for x1 here, we get 5.514. Okay, make sure you run that correctly. So 5.514 there. Okay, and that's two three decimal places. So press enter again here. What this now gives us is x2. And again, just make sure that you run the answer here correctly to three decimal places. What we obtain then is 5.575. Okay, so x3 here, again, if we were doing this by hand, this would be the square root of six times x2 minus two. We'll just press enter again here on your calculator. And if we run this correctly to three decimal places here, what we get then is 5.608 there. And then finally here for x4, this is equal to the square root then of six times x3 minus two, okay? And then finally here, just press enter one more time on your calculator. And again, just to ensure that you round this correctly to three decimal places, and we should get here then is 5.626 there. Okay, like so. So either method is fine here, um, but what I would always do is just present the answer in this form here. Okay, but there we have it. So that gives the solution to part B and the solution to question one. So to finish with here then, let's have a go now at the very last question, question two. So for question two then, as we can see here, we're given this function, and for the first part of this question then part A, all we want to do here is show that this equation, f of x equals zero, can be written in this form here. So for part A then, nice and straightforward really to begin with here, all we do is we take f of x and set that equal to zero. So if f of x is equal to zero here, then we obtain that two x cubed minus three x minus four, is equal to zero, okay? So the first thing to do here then is add three x and four to both sides. So if we do that then, on the left-hand side here, we get two x cubed, and this is equal to three x plus four, okay? Now the next thing to do here is divide through by two. On the left-hand side here, we just get x cubed, and this is equal to 3x over 2. So 3x over 2 there, and 4 over 2, which is just 2. Okay. Now, just notice then, the required form here is the square root. So if I've got x cubed here, well, to be able to take the square root, I need to divide through by x. So dividing through by x here then, we obtain x squared on the left-hand side, and that will be equal to... So 3x over 2 divided by x, that would just leave me with 3 over 2. We get 3 over 2 there. And then 2 divided by x gives us 2 over x there. Like so. And then at this point here, we're nearly finished, right? The other thing to now do is take the square root here of both sides. So in that case, then x is equal to the square root. So the square root here then of 2 over x. So 2 over x plus 3 over 2. Like so there. Obviously, the only condition here is that x cannot be equal to 0, as we can see here. So x is not equal to 0. And this here then is exactly what we wanted to obtain, right? So as required there. So as required. and part A complete. So hopefully nice and straightforward there just to get us started. So now for part B here, let's just do that underneath. The question says use the iterative formula given here to find the values of x1, x2, and x3 to three decimal places taking x0 to be equal to 1.6. So x0 here is equal to 1.6. Now, 
As we discussed with the previous question here, there's two ways to really go about this. You can just do it by hand, and that's absolutely fine. Or you can just use a calculator. And that's the method that I personally prefer. Much quicker. So, for example, if you're doing it by hand here, I'll just show you how to do one. So x1 here would be equal to the square root then of 2 over x0. So 2 over x0 plus 3 over 2. Okay, like so. If you were to input this here into your calculator, that would give you the value of x1. And you could just repeat this process here to find x2 and x3. Okay. But a much easier way and a much quicker way to do this is just use a calculator. Okay. And it can perform all the iteration for us. So if I just grab my calculator here, the first thing that we need to do then is input 1.6 into the memory of our calculator. So I just press 1.6, press enter or execute whatever inputs that into the memory of your calculator. Okay. So once we've done that, then what we need to do now is input this iterative formula here, but replace any x ends with the answer function on your calculator. Okay. So what I do here then is I take the square root, make sure you use a bracket here. So it takes the square root of the full expression as opposed to just the first fraction here. So the square root of the bracket then. So we get two divided by the answer right, replacing any x ends with answer plus three over two. Okay. Close that bracket and press enter. And what this gives us here then is x1. So x1 here to three decimal places is 1.658. Okay, so 1.658 there. This here then is the value of x1. Now again, if you're doing this by hand, you just use this value here of x1 to find x2. So x2 here is equal to the square root. It's the square root then of 2 all over x1 plus 3 over 2. Okay. So you could just input this here then into your calculator using x1 is equal to 1.658. Or if we're just using the iterative process then of our calculator here, we can just press enter again. And what this gives us here then is x2. And what you should obtain here then to three decimal places is 1.64. Five. Okay, so we get 1.645 there for x2. And then finally here, x3 is equal to the square root. So we get 2 over x2 plus 3 over 2. Okay, like so. Again, we just use this value here of x2. If we was doing it by hand, if we're just using our calculator here, all we need to do then is just press enter again. If you run this correctly here, then to three decimal places, what you should get then is 1.648. Okay, like so there. And there we have it. So that gives the value of x1, x2, and x3 there. So that gives the solution to part B and the solution to the very last question, question two. And that brings the end then of this video here on iteration.